The same problem plaguing upper Midwest row crops is being felt in Southern Plains cotton fields. Planted acres look green, but closer inspection reveals the worst. If we could continue to get some timely rains, we could, we could go ahead and make a, a decent crop. But as it, this heat has kind of kicked in, and if it stays like this, we're going to go down in a hurry. Cotton in Oklahoma is grown on both dry land and irrigated fields. Last season, a good portion of the crop failed to emerge, and what did come up was hardly worth mentioning. The USDA reports 75 percent of the Sooner State's cotton is in fair to very poor condition. By some indications, much of what has emerged is expected to produce 50 percent or less of normal crop. In southwestern Oklahoma, where more than half the state's cotton is grown, lack of rain has contributed to the water level in nearby reservoirs falling by nearly 80 percent. A little bit to the positive, last year when we didn't get our cotton up like we did last year, we were able to not to stop putting those inputs into it. Well, as long as we have a viable crop out there and hope to get some rain, you know, get some water in the lake, get, you know, we've got to continue to spend money on this crop. And that, you know, that makes it pretty hard for us and not knowing what we're going to come out with. Concern over bad weather two years in a row has some worried about the effect on the local economy. In 2010, 120,000 bales of cotton were processed at the Cotton Gin in Altus, Oklahoma, but last year the doors to the local business never opened. So you can think about uh, all, of the, all of the inputs and, and all of the associated uh, economic activity that would have been surrounding 120,000 bales, the bringing it in, the ginning of it, and, 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 and the, the movement of that uh, product, both the seed and the lint, and then going to a zero in 2011. That's, that's a really tough hit on the economy. Faced with prospects of corn prices falling to $4 a bushel earlier this season, the Iowa Farm Bureau planned an economic summit. Now, with corn closer to $8 a bushel, discussion in Ames this week was dominated by the weather. Iowa State University Extension Climatologist Elwin Taylor told the convention attendees an end may be in sight. The low pressure is gone from the Gulf of Alaska that had been persisting there for six months and responsible primarily for the fact that we weren't getting weather disturbances coming here. They were all going up into the Yukon. The low pressure was sending them there. That's exactly what it did in 88. That's exactly what changed when the 88 drought finally broke. It took it about six weeks for that to take place. We're three weeks into that. That would give us three more weeks till this is over if it does the same as it did then. But the precipitation, if it ever materializes, will be too little too late for many Iowa producers, whose crops withered again this week under four consecutive days of triple-digit heat. Water sources have started to evaporate, forcing some municipalities to call for voluntary conservation in the hopes of avoiding mandatory rationing. Taylor says 8% of the U.S. corn crop has already been lost. He expects that figure to double if hot and dry weather patterns persist and he predicts inconsistent production in the years ahead. This is the fourth period of consistent yields. The other three periods of consistent yields since we started keeping records are 19 years long each. Last year was year 19. Now, Taylor says we're entering a period of 25 years where volatile yields will become the new normal. All of your risk management that you have been doing to take account of the ups and downs of the yield, as minuscule as they are in the last 19 years, have just been practice so that you've got a feel for it. Corn and soybean producers, of course, aren't the only ones impacted by the drought. Reduced production has serious implications for the ethanol industry. We are kind of expecting uh, that 2012 uh, will be the first time since 96 that we haven't seen growth uh, in, in production. Jeff Cooper of the Renewable Fuels Association says his industry has run at 85 percent capacity since the beginning of the year. Faced with soaring corn prices, more than 20 ethanol facilities have shut down. Cooper says the ethanol industry will meet the 35 billion gallon production mandate, but the months ahead are going to be challenging. It's going to be a very difficult operating environment for the ethanol industry uh, over the next, uh, certainly over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Livestock producers are watching their profit margins shrink due to increased corn prices. 
Beef production is off nearly 4% in 2012, while pork looks to expand, albeit slowly. Chad Hart, Iowa State University's extension economist, says the record commodity market runs of 2012 reflect a similar situation in 2008, with one notable exception. That year, weather improved, demand did not, and we saw things drop off the table. This year, we know that weather condition is having an impact on production. That will help hold prices up, unlike 2008. But at the same time, we've got to recognize that that high price is eroding the demand we have for our crop. It will put a top to this market. Because while we may be able to grow some corn, people may not be able to afford it. And I'm looking at the livestock feeders. I'm looking at the ethanol industry. There's only so much they can pay for corn. 